Hi, I'm Tim. Today is February 22nd, 2021, and today the FAA announced its uh, approach to testing recreational RC model airplane and drone pilots, the tests that we're all going to have to take here in the near future. Let's get to it. In November of 2018, President Trump signed the FAA reauthorization bill. This was an act of Congress that was $16.8 billion. It's a lot of money and it provided funding for all the activities that the FAA does, everything from airline certification, training, pay, etc. Part of the 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act directed from Congress to the FAA to start getting their arms around UAS pilots. And UAS is FAA technical term for unmanned aircraft small. In other words, radio control model aircraft with drones weighing more than eight ounces, less than 55 pounds, to start to build an understanding of who these uh, drone pilots were, what training they have, what they need, and more importantly, to give them, everybody who flies in the national airspace system, so, some sort of testing. Part of this act with other things was uh, UASs included remote ID. I'll put a video up for the remote ID. A lot of things are gonna affect us. So the last thing that was kind of unknown, well, what is this test going to look like for recreational RC model airplane pilots or drone pilots that just fly for their own? So as part of the 2018 bill, the FAA decided to divide up UAS operators and shorthand for UAS, unmanned aircraft small, is drone. A drone is a radio control model airplane, quadcopter, but drones are the majority of the flyers. The FAA uses that as shorthand a lot. They divided drone operators into people that fly their drones for money or the intent to make money, or drone operators that just fly for the fun of it, just recreational flyers. The drone operators that make money off their drones, YouTube videos, taking pictures for real estate agents, whatever, they are certified under Part 107 of the FAA regulations. I've got a separate video of that, of the FAA process. I took and passed my um, FAA Part 107 test in December of uh, 2020. It was a pretty challenging test. You do have to study for it. It goes over a lot of things, airspace, uh, regulations, um, and so forth. But what was left unstated was what's going to happen on the testing for the recreational flyer, somebody that just, is, it just flies on the weekends, their RC model um, airplanes at the club field. And so the bill, the FAA bill was signed in November of 2018. Uh, about six months later, the FAA started working with what they call stakeholders, people that are interested in this. It could be a manufacturer of drones, it could be uh, community-based organizations, it could be colleges. And one of the stakeholders that, that I'm focused on on this is the Academy of Model Aeronautics, the AMA. So the AMA sat down with the FAA, these other stakeholders, and there was a three-phase process to determine what to do on the testing for the recreational pilot. The first step was to determine the content, what needed to be um, tested for the recreational pilot. And it came down to knowledge and safety items. So that was pretty much settled with the stakeholders in the FAA. The second part that continued after that was how are we going to administer this test? When I took my part 107 test, I had to go to an FAA designated testing center. I had to pay $150 for it. It was a very structured process because I got a pilot certificate at the end of it and um, it was at a local airport, but it was, it was a very involved process, just as if I was taking a check ride for a full scale aircraft. So what came out for the recreational pilot, the discussions with the FAA and the stakeholders is, the, um, they were gonna come, the FAA is gonna come up with um, test administrators and the test administrators that would be blessed by the FAA could determine how they're gonna offer this test for the recreational pilot. And what that means is, let's say that the FAA becomes a authorized test provider, which, which they will. Um, the, F, the AMA will be permitted to offer the test online. It could be on your computer, a smartphone, an iPad. We don't know yet. The FAA will develop that, uh, brief its technical contents to the FAA to their satisfaction that it's secure and can identify who took the test, out of that nature. And then what will happen is the um, AMA will give the test. And the other requirement, if you're going to be given the test as part of this process is the test is free. It can't, they cannot, the AMA cannot charge anybody to take this test. As I mentioned, I paid $150 for part 107 test. I had to take that. 
The recreational test is going to be free and it'll be available online. So things have fallen into place fairly quickly. The FAA understands what the contents of the test should be. They understand uh, that there are going to be community-based educational organizations given the test. And what came out today was the four-month period to determine how the FAA is going to actually select the exact test operators. And so a word you're going to see a lot is trust. And trust is the official FAA acronym for the test for the recreational flyers. And trust stands for, and I'll put this um, on the video, the recreational UAS safety test, trust, T-R-U-S-T, the recreational UAS safety uh, test. That will be the test. And so what's going to happen is the FAA will provide trust content, the test itself, to the FAA approved test administrators. And then the administrators, as I mentioned, will determine how they're going to do it. It'll be online and it has to be at no cost. So the timeline for this is really pretty quick. The application period to be a test administrator, the third step starts today, February 22nd, 2001, and goes for five weeks. It finishes up on March 31st. During the month of April, from April 1st to April 30th, the FAA will take all these submissions of the organizations that want to, admit the, want to administer the test, manufacturers, drone manufacturers, educational institutions, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and they'll review them to make sure that they're legit. There will be a decision point on April 30th. The FAA will determine who has been approved to give the test. For the month of May 2021, it'll be a validation and formal onboarding is what's called the FAA. The FAA has taken this very seriously. Uh, for example, the um, test administrators, the AMA, will, must have a shareable content object reference model compliant learning management system and deploy the product by June 1st. It's a technical term. The FAA is very comfortable giving these remote learning modules. Um, I did a lot when I was flying for the airlines. It's all certified testing. The FAA knows what the requirements are. The AMA will know what they have to do. And then the formal onboarding will happen the month of May, and there will be a decision point on June 1st who is allowed to uh, give the test, and then the test will be presented. All this will be much clearer by the time June when AMA is authorized to do it. We don't know from the FAA when we have to take this test, what, what the due dates are for it, but the other very important thing that I want to um, let everybody know about this test, because you're thinking, I haven't taken a test in years, why do I have to do this now? The, FAA, the um, AMA understands this, the FAA understands that the group of recreational RC and drone model pilots, they're not used to taking tests, it's not, they don't want this to be a burden, they want it to be a partnership that you have certain areas of knowledge and safety that you can properly operate your drone or RC model aircraft so you don't hurt yourself, you don't hurt other people, and you're not a danger to other aircraft. That's the intent. So what the AMA has done, the AMA negotiated with the FAA that the training is going to really not be, um, the test is not going to really be a test per se where you take 20 questions and pass fail. It's going to evolve into a short training and education module with a 100% pass rate. What this means, most likely, there'll be 20 questions. There may be a short lecture before the questions on the computer. And they'll ask a question, for example, what is the maximum height for, that you can fly your RC model airplane? And the altitudes may be 100 feet, 400 feet, 500 feet. Those will be your three choices. You will select one, and if it's a wrong answer, for example, 100 feet, the program will come back on your smart on your uh, computer or your or your iPad and say that's a wrong answer. Review something. You'll try another hit until you get the right answer. In this case, it's 400 feet for RC model aircraft. You get a little green check mark. You pass. Congratulations. You go on to the next question. So the idea is nobody can fail it. Everybody passes it, and you learn something so that you can be a safe, uh, knowledgeable operator even as a recreational RC pilot in the National Airspace System. So again, um, this came out today, February 22nd, 2021. It's a big step on this evolution of the process. It's required by law by the 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act. The AMA has been an invaluable resource helping with this and look forward to more information to come as the AMA does their application process, gets approved, and then has the formal rollout of this test. 